My name's Mark McHenry. Uh, we're here at Mount Lindsay. Uh, we have uh, organic produce. We've been on this family farm for about four decades now. Come from a family farm up 500 k's north-ish. Uh, and we're looking at growing uh, very traditional vegetables. We supply local restaurants and we're uh, collaborating with Murdoch University and the Future Food System CRC on some really interesting research around polyphenols in the organic food we grow and the inulin in the food we grow and how we can better improve our gut and the health uh, because we choose to eat different foods. So one of the research projects is focusing on inulin, which is a, a insoluble fiber. Uh, it uh, is indigestible to humans, but our gut bacteria absolutely love it. And we put it in food products to make our gut bacteria more healthy. And one of the interesting research projects at the Australian National Phenome Centre is we found that inulin ain't inulin, if you like. So there's long chains and short chains. And we're investigating the differences between the plants that we're growing here organically and how they interact with our gut biome. And some are long chain inulin, which is the elephant garlic and the uh, Jerusalem artichoke and globe artichoke. And some are shorter chain inulin, which is the yakon. So they're all uh, very traditional foods, uh, not very well available, but they're excellent for our gut biome. But we want to know exactly how good they are and what amount you should be eating to get the benefits for your gut. And it's a, just a fascinating human trial coming along at Murdoch University about who can eat what, where, and how long does it take you to get a better, healthier gut. And you can measure it each hour and how quick everyone responds. So people will have an idea of which foods they can eat and how their body responds. And it's all personalized food, like personalized medicine, but for food and the technology they're using there is just phenomenal. What we set out to do is, can we develop a method that is quick and is also highly reproducible to characterize the inulin in the sample? And if we can characterize the different degree of polymerization in the sample, can we then quantify them? If we can quantify them, can we then also apply it to um, characterize and quantify all the four different samples? And to do this, we use one of the most expensive instruments that's actually available in the ANPC, and it is called Magnetic Resonance Mass Spec MRMS here. Uh, it grows really, really well. Uh, when we uh, moved to the farm 40 years ago, it was covered in thistles. <laughs> it's a relative of a thistle. Uh, it's a really traditional crop. It doesn't need to be weeded. It's perennial. It's super high in inulin, but it's also high in polyphenols, which is one of the, um, the chemicals in our foods, like olive oil, which make it super healthy for us. Uh, we've been breeding our globe artichokes seriously for about 14 years now. Um, the research with Andrew at Murdoch University, the PhD student there, he's found that some of our cultivars uh, have got much more concentrations of polyphenols in them uh, than your commercially available cultivars, some up to 10 times. So that's a huge difference. So that tells us we've got something special we wanted to, we thought we did, but we didn't know. That's why we did the research. Artichokes are very good at going brown very quickly. So in a value added product, if an artichoke goes brown, that's not only visually unappealing for a consumer, but it also decreases the nutritional quality as the phenolics are degraded into brown pigments. Now, we already have a number of different uh, mitigation processes in the industry to deal with enzymatic browning. We can apply heat treatment, uh, pH regulation, or modified atmosphere to inhibit the enzyme polyphenol oxidase from forming those brown pigments. But this, to an extent, is potentially limiting what sort of value add products we can develop uh, to an extent. Another option is we can select particular cultivars that have a low propensity for browning. So that is usually because they have a low phenolic content and a low enzyme activity. But obviously we're trying to achieve something that's more nutritious. And so reducing the phenolic content isn't something that we really want to be doing. So one of our questions was, can we achieve a product, have a particular line that is low propensity for browning, 
but has that high vanilla content still. So the research that Andrew's doing shows us how much the polyphenols change when we process it. So what, what it's like when it's fresh, what it's like when it's cooked, what types of polyphenols, how it goes brown like an apple or not, is a relative difference between two polyphenols and they're both really in high concentrations of the artichoke. So there's so many things about the artichoke apart from it's an ancient vegetable, one of the first domesticated. It's a fascinating plant. Well, this is a globe artichoke. It's from the Mediterranean region, which is why it grows well here, because we're a little Mediterranean climate in Australia. This is technically a flower. This is what we eat. Most people eat it in cans, uh, but it's got nothing on fresh. Fresh is just the best. So what happens is you see all these outer bracts. People usually pull them off, and then they don't eat those bits, and they eat just the heart or the middle or the base. There's lots of different names for the edible portion. It's pretty obvious when you're eating it when you get to the edible portion when you get to the inedible portion. Now you can see how big this plant is. If we harvest a tiny little bit, it ends up being pretty wasteful. So about 95% of this is wasted in current industry practice. One of the interesting things is the inulin and the polyphenols, the different concentrations are all over the plant. So you can actually use 95% of the plant. You can extract your polyphenols and inulin. And then at the end of the day, you've taken the valuable components and the food, and you can return it to uh, the soil in situ as compost. Uh, and as organic producers, we're looking to make sure we keep every bit of nutrition in the soil on site rather than exporting it because it's very hard to get in a natural form.